Good evening, Australia. Welcome to The Platform. I'm Michael Cazzilni. A fun and exciting show coming up tonight. On the couch joining me, Cassie Lane, international model turned author. Bai Ling, international superstar from Hollywood. Uh, Warwick Kappa and Rosanna Ferracci uh, adding some excitement to the show. And I'm really excited about Cheryl and May, a young superstar in the making. Uh, let's have a look at the great lady, Cassie Lane. Cassie Lane was in a relationship with Collingwood footballer Alan Didak for 16 months. She found the high-profile AFL life definitely had its advantages. You get to go to lots of fun parties and have this kind of VIP glamorous existence. You get to wear nice dresses, you get to, um, you get to drink free alcohol and, and get free food and you don't have to line up anywhere. Um, so that's pretty fun. But it was when she was awarded Worst Dressed at the 2006 Brownlow that Cassie saw the dark side of being a so-called wag. So when I got Worst Dressed at the Brownlow, um, I thought the world had ended. I was so upset. It's like the yardstick of wag success and it's the ultimate sort of goal for a woman. Um, and so then to be just pilloried, to be attacked for everything from my face to my hair to my dress, I cried for a long time. Now with a master's qualification and new book under her belt, Cassie is trying to help rebalance those prejudices. I've received so many amazing reviews and, and so much amazing feedback. But I've also um, received a lot of feedback from men and that a lot of them have said that it really has opened their eyes to um, the way it is to be a woman in the world. Cassie, welcome to the platform. International model turned very successful author. You know, I travelled to Sydney uh, uh, a few months ago and I saw this at all the uh, airport bookshops yeah. and now I meet the great lady. Welcome. Thank you. What an amazing journey. It has been, that's for sure. Wow, and you know what I like about this book? It's very real, it's very authentic and yeah. I love it. You've, you've turned into a very authentic, beautiful person. Thank Where you. Where did the journey start? Uh, with the writing or...? No, the, the, the modelling career. The modelling. Um, well, uh, I guess the way that I start the book, I was a very strange looking kid. I was, um, I was very awkward, I had social anxiety and I was very, very tall. Um, and so I guess I was very unpopular and I just thought if I was pretty that all of my problems would be solved. And, um, and then I went through puberty and I kind of grew into my body and I started getting attention. And that's when I started um, getting um, uh, being approached by different um, modelling scouts from mm, the age of sort and, of and, 16. And you had, a, you had a very successful modelling career. Cassie, did, um, uh, tell me about after you finished year 12, did you go straight on to uni or did that come later? Um, well, I, so I lived in Italy for a year and, and I did a bit of modelling there. Amazing. And then I came back and I was modelling and I did a bit of uni at the same time. Was this after school, was it? Uh, before, so 12. I actually did a, a student exchange when I was 16. Wow. So I went and lived in Italy and that's where I was scouted and I ended up doing this job where I got to travel. It was actually really cool up and down Italy doing fashion parades and stuff. That is amazing. Yeah, it was. It was. It was, um, it was a really awesome experience. An international model for how long, Cassie? Uh, God, I don't know. I started when I was 16. I finished when I was about 25. Yep. Um, so, yeah. What a great journey, and it's all in here. It's very raw. It talks about vibrators. It talks about um, <laughs> your first um, man who took your virginity at 19. It says Chris. Is that his real name? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I haven't really. I've only used names where the person is recognisable and there's, it would seem silly otherwise. So there's a lot of, mm. a lot so, of different characters so in there. So Ellen was your second boyfriend? <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> What's a lot, tell me about um, being a wag. Um, I should start by prefacing that the wag tale comes at the end of the book. Okay. Um, it's actually, there's only one chapter, so most of the book is about my modelling experience, experience working in Milan and LA, and I talk a lot about, um, it's actually, although it's like a fun, funny story about modelling and, and partying with celebrities and getting up to mischief, the, the main theme of my book is to kind of weave in 
um, the various ways that women internalise sexism, especially when it comes to the beauty industry, because I was so exposed to that world. Um, so, yeah, I talk about that. And then at the very end, when I returned, so after I was living in LA, I returned to Melbourne mm. to get out of that world and ended up dating a, an AFL footballer. Mm. So I was kind of thrust straight back into that world. Mm. Well, it's certainly, a, it's your journey. It's a great journey. And um, from a fragile, maybe a girl that, that wasn't that confident, uh, you've turned into a very supremely confident um, young lady. <laughs> and then you went back and studied writing. Yeah, I did. I did my master's in writing. It's um, amazing. Yeah, so it took me a few years. I always loved it. I always wanted to do it, but I, um, I never had the confidence. And again, I think this kind of comes into the stories that I talk about where when a woman becomes objectified, especially um, when it's reinforced by doing something along yeah. the lines of Is this of your modeling. first book? Yes, it is. I was surprised. I, I went through it. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't seem like it's a first-time author. It's like oh, somebody who's... Um, written for years. Yeah, thank you. Well, I mean, I guess I always kind of was writing. And it's very real. Yes, yes. Is there um, uh, equality, do you think, in uh, Australia with men and women? <laughs> we spoke about this before. Uh, you had said people think that... that yeah, um, I thought it's all equal. You days. thought everything was equal and I yeah. said that I vehemently disagree with you. Mm -hmm. um, no, there's actually a study that was done recently um, and they said, if we move forward in the, at the rate that we're currently going, we will achieve gender parity in 217 years. So that was, that was done by a big organisation. That's interesting. Cassie, can I ask you something, please? Um, uh, from a shy girl to a more confident girl, um, and then you got the news, national media, worst dressed at the Brownlow. Yes. How did that make you feel? Uh, like a piece of shit. <laughs> No, it was awful um, at the time. And again, like I kind of talk about it being uh, the, a wag, being the partner of a footballer, you, you are completely robbed of your voice. You don't have a personality. You are an appendage to your partner. Well, some people say, uh, the sort of older, more sophisticated females, they say, oh, look at their handbags. Exactly. That's yeah. exactly was right. It, what was it like being a handbag? Yeah, for sure. But you, so you, you kind of put in, thrust into the spotlight, but you don't get a say in anything. And the only time that a wag gets to kind of um, assert herself is through the Brownlow um, and so then the Brownlow best and worst dress is the mm. only form of validation which it's is a, really it's a silly way to do it but uh, the book attracted a lot of media attention let's have a look at some of those um, uh, some of that media clips well, she is the former model turned wag who is lifting the lid on her experience inside one of Australia's most famous footy clubs. Labelling the club culture a cult, Cassie Lane was thrust into the limelight when she dated Collingwood star Alan Didac. Well, you've, you've called your book How to Dress a Dummy, so yes. that is a reference to the Brownlows moment, is it? Uh, no, no. Actually, it's to not? be honest, the book, there's only one chapter in the book that's about football. This book is about my experience um, modelling around the world, uh, partying with celebrities, living in LA, living in Milan, and there's a lot of feminist themes um, that I explore throughout the book about how women internalise sexism, especially in regards to the beauty industry. It's just this one chapter towards the end, which is about Alan and that relationship. And the reason I talk about that is because I really think it's important to talk about the, the sort of the sexist, uh, sexism and, and these rigid stereotypes mm. perpetuated by the football culture that then hugely influence society. That's amazing, Cassie. How did you uh, meet all these um, superstars? Uh, I guess I was living in LA um, and just living in a model house and yeah. um, we just ended up in this crazy world where we were sort of partying all the time and there was just kind of celebrities everywhere and we were going to house parties and yeah. Some of those people, uh, we saw The Rock there, we yeah. saw, um, who, who else was there? Um, well, who else did you meet? Steven Seagal. Yeah. Uh, I, I dated Luke Wilson for a little while. Oh, did you? Like, there's just so, so what's many. Steve, what's Steve like? He's a bit of an uh, interesting character, isn't he? Yeah, he is. He's kind of crazy, is he? I think. Yeah. He's very um, regal, I hear. Uh, regal, uh, very uh, p perfect. Yeah, well, I'd say that he's. Um, He's got tickets on himself. He yeah. thinks he's above, like, he's, he's very spiritual, um, but he's sort of holier than thou. I ended up having dinner with him, um, which I talk about in the book, with a group of people, and he, he continuously talked about Buddhism and how he was the, ho he was the chosen one and oh. how he had magical powers, but he was incredibly sexist and Amazing. treated everyone at the table pretty terribly. So, Cassie, getting back to... Um, uh, 
you know, I know, my, know myself when I do a Google search on Michael Gazzelli and crap comes out, it makes you feel, well, I used to worry about it, but now I sort of, I just detach from it. But how did that make you feel back then? Did you sort of go home and hide for a while when they said, um, I reckon um, Cassie Lane was the, uh, the worst dress that night. And who made that determination? Uh, well, it's done by the Herald Sun. I don't know. The, the journalist remains anonymous, which I think is a bit of a cop out, to be honest. Um, I was really upset about it afterwards. I, I genuinely devastated because I just thought it was such an important day. Um, and I kind of, for a couple of days, I was kind of moping around. And, and there was actually a lot of media that happened because of it because it was really mean, the article. Well, I think it was jealousy, because I saw you at, uh, I saw a photo and you looked absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> Thank you. And the dress looked gorgeous. Thank you. I mean, it doesn't, who gives a shit? You know what I mean? Like, it's not a big deal. I think she and was I, lying. Yeah, well, who knows? You know, but I like, think, uh, for me, it was like a really good lesson, because I, it made me, uh, it, it enabled me to separate myself from it, to see what it, it for what it was, and mm. to realise that it's just a bunch of crap. Yeah. So it was, for me, it was kind of a blessing in disguise, because I really oh. got to see it was just a joke. Like, it's a better story to tell everyone that I was worse dressed. You <laughs> it's know? A, Cassie, it's amazing the journey because there's been ups and downs and lows like every human being. Uh, ten years on, what's your confidence like? Uh, well, I'm definitely more confident than I was, but it's it's more about the fact that I I feel like I've kind of um, I've changed my values. Like I I used to focus so much on I, not that I was vain, but I. Thought it was. I thought that the way I looked defined who I was. Whereas now I'm totally separate from that. And Amazing, Cassie Lane. Thank you for coming on the couch. You're a beautiful soul. Thank you. And we'll have you on again with your next book. But it's a great <laughs> book, How to Dress a Dummy, available at all major bookshops. Thank you very much for the copy. We'll be back very shortly with a great man, Warwick Kappa.